Republican Senator Ron Johnson facing this new scandal and even some calls to resign after that insurrection hearing broke the news that as Mike Pence was preparing to certify the now infamous election procedure on January 6th, Johnson was still agitating to personally confront Pence and try to give him these possibly fraudulent documents that would back some kind of voter fraud on the Senate floor, potentially. All of this moments before the Capitol was breached. Now, Pence had rejected Trump's illegal orders to try to steal the election, but Johnson pressed on, his top aide saying, Johnson needs to hand something to VP POTUS, please. The aide asked what it was, perhaps aware of the plots, and the staffer responds, it's the, quote, alternate slate of electors from Michigan and Wisconsin. The archivist didn't receive them as if they were real or valid, which again shows being involved in actually submitting this. Pence aides responds, do not give that to him. Well, that's crystal clear. Johnson had these fraudulent papers identified by state, knew they had not been received because they were not valid, but intended to push them on to Pence even after Pence was rejecting this whole scheme. And no Senate staffer tees up that kind of unusual White House-level contact with a senator handing over these once-secret items unless the senator directs it. Which is why Johnson has been in trouble since the news broke. He's not even trying to do the usual deflection or claim fake news. He's apparently so worried about taking questions on this that he tried to avoid any further comment by basically faking a phone call when pressed for answers leaving the Capitol. So we want to show you exactly how that went, how it fully transpired, along with a fact check. How much did you know about what your chief of staff was doing with the alternate slates of electors? No, you're not. I can see your phone. I can see your screen. Does your chief of staff still work for you, Senator? Can you explain what happened there? Why was your chief of staff even offering this to the vice president? Because it's a complete non-story. We just used statements. And this is a non-story. I don't, I don't know what you're, what you're even concerned about. Well, they said that Did you, you were, the, your chief of staff was saying that you offered, my, 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 you wanted to tell, no, provide no, 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 alternate no, electors of no, Michigan and Wisconsin this, this, to Vice President Mike Pence. This, this was a staff-to-staff -staff exchange, and I was, you know, basically unaware of it. And the chief staff contacted the vice president's staff, said, do you want this? They said no, and, and we didn't deliver it, and that's the end of the story. But why was he even asking for that? Because somebody delivered this to our office and asked to deliver that to the vice president. Did you support the, his efforts to try to get those slates to the vice president? No, I, I, I had no knowledge of this. I, I, I had no knowledge of this. I, I, I had no knowledge of this. Who's the person? I, I, had no, I, you know, I, I had no involvement in an alternate state of, uh, slate of electors. I had no idea this thing would be delivered to us. Got delivered staff to staff. My chief staff did the right thing. Contact the vice president's staff. Uh, they said didn't want it, so we didn't deliver it. Who's the person? Again, that's the end of the story. Uh, that's not the end of the story. That's a fact check there, and you could see the reporters pressing him in real time, which actually worked to get the senator to stop conducting his fake phone call and further explain himself. Johnson learned that that busy phone trick, it works better if you're actually on a call. As the saying goes, you used to call me on my cell phone when you need my fraudulent documents. I don't know, something like that. But beyond the clumsy misdirection here, the senator cannot reasonably claim that fraudulent coup documents were all just his staff going rogue. The substance matters because the evidence shows, as we reported yesterday, he was pushing this last ditch fraud plot at, as you see on the screen, 12.37 p.m. on January 6th, within 20 minutes of what you see on the right. Pence entering the Capitol to certify the election at that very period of time, within that half hour, was this push to still give Pence fraud voter fraud about two different states. So the questions here are serious. They may require answers under oath. Who did provide the documents? Why did Senator Johnson want to then provide knowingly fraudulent materials to then Vice President Pence? Did the senator intend for them to change that day's proceeding in some manner or override lawful votes from states, including his state? Those are potential crimes. Who was this staffer who was being so anonymously maligned? 
Would this staffer tell prosecutors under oath that they went rogue and this was all their idea? Those questions about fraudulent documents to steal an election are even more important than that clumsy attempt at hotline bling.